Ja. What, what, what do you mean steaming? Oh, streaming. Oh, we're on. Well, why didn't you? Yes, well, all right. <clears throat> uh, good, good evening or, or afternoon or, or morning or whenever you might be watching this. And welcome to the Ludlow Fringe Online. Whatever that might be. I, I, I am the, the right disreputable uh, Captain Charles Fusspot, uh, Bachelor of Science, Licentiate of the Institute of Biology, a Fellow of the Institute of Medical Laboratory Scientists, uh, European Computer Driving Licence and Bar. <clears throat> uh, formerly in the employ of the Sultan of Brunei uh, and many other fine Indian restaurants, um, uh, I have been asked to present, uh, whether you want them or not, uh, something called the... Coronavirus Chronicles, a series of emails by a retiree living on the borders of Herefordshire, Worcestershire, Shropshire and Sanity. Penned partly in jest, partly in frustration and almost entirely in single-spaced aerial ten-point, which is why I'm having some trouble reading it, the Coronavirus Chronicles began as a circular with, in hindsight, a remarkable lack of hindsight. <clears throat> Uh, for his sins, the, the author was sentenced to three years at the now-defunct uh, Queen Elizabeth College of London University, where he studied biology and biochemistry, uh, specialising in plant pathology and women. <clears throat> there is little call for plant pathologists on the King's Road, uh, so he underwent a religious conversion uh, to chemical pathology with the National Health Service at the now-defunct uh, St Stephen's Hospital in the midst of an HIV epidemic, uh, before careers, now defunct, in sales, marketing and business analysis, uh, latterly for the now defunct Diagnostics Division of the Olympus Camera Company and the now defunct UK arm of a French sterile supplies company. Now, now the camera division of the Olympus Camera Company is also now defunct. But in fairness, he never worked directly for them, so it's not entirely his fault. A, a smattering of the scientific method combined with long exposure to the oxymoron of corporate intelligence uh, means uh, it's sharpened his sense of irony, which, as I think we all know, means a, a little bit like iron. Now, in his spare time, he, he is obsessed with acting and directing in non-professional theatre. Now, far too old and far too well known to be getting good parts anymore, he had begun writing his own scripts until upstaged by COVID-19. Now, conventional stage productions are impossible. I invite you instead to see the curtain go up on his own daily dramas. Now, really, Colin, if you're watching this, this material is absolutely dire. You simply must get out more, social isolation notwithstanding. <clears throat> These pages have been reset, uh, spell-checked and repaginated in a vague attempt at literacy, but the underlying rubbish remains unchanged. Uh, you might like to consider that the original text, which is littered with uh, typos, grammatical errors and misspellings, was cleaned up in just under a minute by a fairly simple, widely available and entirely non-sentient computer programmer. So he may not be half as clever as he thinks, if indeed he thinks at all. So, here we go. Uh, Friday, April the 3rd, 1605, episode 932. Dear all, the ancient UK class system has now been replaced more or less overnight by a new three-class system. Number one, essential workers. Number two, stay-at-homes, low risk. And number three, stay-at-homes, high risk. Uh, class two and three are separated by the idea that um, one class two uh, can leave home to go food shopping once a week. Everyone else in class two and three who lives with someone will, will now know if their partner has the perpetual capacity to find little jobs around the house for you to do, just as you are sitting down for a box set binge, or, or if, like me, uh, they are blessed to share their life with a, a veritable goddess amongst womankind who just happens to monitor my email accounts. 
Now, I, I'm not saying that boredom has set in, uh, but I have repainted the kitchen doors and drawers, which were magnolia with black handles, and I have repainted them in magnolia with, with new handles, black ones. But then, <laughs> how many women out there can say, well, they've had their drawers hand-painted and fitted with new handles, and any old holes doweled, filled and sanded, no less. Yes. Mm. Well, now, the local DIY store was prepared to deliver 17 doors, 6 drawers, and 23 new handles for just £1,500. Instead, I used the two tins each of undercoat and magnolia eggshell, uh, 24 exterior pull handles at £18 a dozen already stockpiled in the garage, and I hand-trimmed a hundred plasterboard screws to length with a pair of bolt cutters. Ninety quid the lot. Ah. What, with the, with the money I've saved on this, uh, and the money I'm saving by giving up smoking, um, I've taken up smirking instead. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I shall shortly have enough, uh, put by in a month or so, to short what's left of the pound. Uh, now, uh, taking my lead from Donald Trump, who, who more than any other statesman in the 21st century has truly put the er uh back into leadership, I am, like all right-thinking people, trying to panic by an automatic assault weapon. If you ask me, it's the only language these Chinese commie viruses understand. Now, now I would write more, but apparently it's time for my morning walk around the living room. Coming, dear. <clears throat> Sunday, the 5th of April, <clears throat> oh, 0300 hours, with a coronavirus. Um, hello there. A coronavirus was first identified in the 1930s as a respiratory disease of chickens, but it's been around for eons before man domesticated jungle fowl, and certainly long before KFC and Nando's. Human coronaviruses were encountered in the 1960s researching the common cold, and COVID-19 appears to have originated in the markets of Wuhan in infected bats. Now, now before rushing to demonise China or, or, or phoning a bogus takeaway order through to the Lotus Garden restaurant, uh, consider this. A Spanish flu, which killed at least 50 million people in two years, broke out in France at the tail end of World War I. Now, variously described as Russian flu and Japanese flu, Spanish flu almost certainly arrived in France on a US troop ship. It was only labelled Spanish because Spain, as the only major European non-combatant, did, didn't censor its newspapers. So the first, first reports of the pandemic were in Spanish. Hmm. Now, now, around 60 million of the world's population of human beings will die this year of something, but only a fraction of those will succumb to COVID-19. Now, if you absolutely must blame someone, in my opinion, it's farmers. Mm. You see, until about 10,000 years ago, uh, the human population was, uh, oh, 150, perhaps 300 million, all of whom uh, were nomadic hunter-gatherers mostly in groups of perhaps a few hundred or, or a thousand at the most. Well, of course, the odd group did get wiped out by ghastly infectious diseases, and they were all of them completely riddled with, with bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa, arthropods, flukes, worms, much like you and me indeed, with whom they lived in varying degrees of uh, peaceful and not-so-peaceful collaboration. Now, now, life was hard but refreshingly devoid of uh, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, fatty liver disease, renal failure, Alzheimer's, autoimmune disease and cancer. There was uh, no industrial pollution. Fossil fuels were still by and large fossils. The greenhouse effect was known as the erupting volcano effect. There was no pressing shortage of tropical, subtropical, temperate or indeed any other kind of forest. Absolutely no one wore their baseball caps back to front and finished every sentence with, you know what I mean? Uh, you couldn't buy a single biscuit made with palm oil. Milk was still unhomogenized, if indeed a little prone to either run away, gore you to death or give you tuberculosis. Now, now when the world's first would-be celebrity chef dropped some grass on a fire and sampled the charred seeds later, well... 
having invented crisp bread by accident, of course one of his relatives decided to grow grass selectively for bigger seed heads, and farming was born. <laughs> well, well, farming created excess grain which could be stored, releasing mankind from the shackles of perpetual hunter-gathering. Well, no, not, not, not quite, you see. It released a few men, because everyone else was farming like mad from dawn to dusk, because there were, as yet, uh, no cheap migrant workers from Eastern Europe. Thus was born the era of the psychopath, who, who realised they, they could benefit from this bonanza uh, without the trouble of sweated labour uh, by the application of a little brute force and ignorance. In no time, land which previously had no real value or concept of ownership had espoused bloody territorial conflicts that lasted for centuries. These self-entitled nutjobs still roam the planet to this day, and we pay them millions of pounds to wreck the planet and call them CEOs or, or, or Your Highness. Now, now sadly, th this system, however riddled with the injustice, has been enormously successful at manufacturing a, a troublesome and highly polluting end product. About 7.7 .7 billion of them. You, you see, notwithstanding two world wars and the single most devastating pandemic in human history, Spanish flu, do, do keep up, in just the last century, the human population has increased a more than fourfold in the same time period. Frankly, you know, if we'd all resisted the lure of the white sliced loaf, coronavirus would probably have wiped out a tribe of, oh, I don't know, 157 random souls in Angles, who'd under-barbecued their pipistrelle bat burgers, and we'd be none the wiser until someone noticed that the monthly coracle to Dublin was late. Well, We'd, we'd attribute their, their mysterious demise to some sloppy sacrificing at the last harvest festival. Job done. <laughs> Back to foraging for acorns wherever the local squirrel, uh, which we ate yesterday, had left them. So, so next time you're out walking the dog across the local field and it slips the lead to worry the sheep, take a moment. You see, sheep have enough to worry about already. They, they are susceptible to bovine coronavirus, no less. Now, if the farmer threatens to shoot your dog, you could always unleash a tirade of invective, uh, blaming him and his ancestors for the current mess that we're in. Anyway, good luck with that. Now, now keep calm and carry on washing your hands. Above all, if anyone offers you a bat, don't eat it. 7th of April, 2020. 16, 12 hours. Where will it all end? Dear all, to clarify, I have given up smoking. <clears throat> now, it's, it's only my eyes and my prose that smoulder quietly. <laughs> oh, note to self, delete last sentence before emailing, bit too much. Ah, yes, well, uh, moving on. I have had several requests and not a few suggestions by email. Now, I've not met the individuals concerned, so I don't know how old they are, but the nature of their inquiries and the language used leads me to believe they were born too late to have benefited from a proper grammar school education. Now, on the bright side, during the current emergency, of course, no one has to stand within two metres of those kinds of people. So, you ask me, what exactly is a chronicle? Well, for those of you without the necessary medical laboratory experience, a chronicle is, of course, a small chronic. Mm. A small acute is not, on the other hand, a cuticle. Indeed, on the other hand, and on this hand, you have ten of them, one on the end of each finger. So I hope that's completely clear now. Now, the, the other night in the pitch dark at 1am, did I not mention I've given up smoking? Standing in the garden, I, I lifted my eyes to a, to a cloudless sky, punctured by countless tiny pinpricks of light, some of it from stars already long dead, whose last remnant of existence was their ghostly light, still voyaging across the unfathomable reaches of space. 
Well, makes you think, eh? Now, now, hominids, as distinct from apes, first appear in the fossil records dating from around 250,000 years ago. Modern man, by which I mean, of course, Homo sapiens and not the product of the comprehensive education system, has been around for barely 100,000 years. And civilization of any kind does not emerge until man began farming a mere 10,000 years ago. So weak, hairless, unarmoured and slow, lacking weaponized nails or teeth, we used our opposable thumbs to achieve complete global dominance in the geological blink of an eye. Now, since 1950, there are more people on the planet than ever lived before 1950. We used our opposable thumbs uh, to acquire, and we still retain sufficient nuclear armament to extinguish the entire human race. We, we have declined to engage in a nuclear holocaust and seem hell-bent instead on warming the planet more gradually but with a broadly similar outcome for man's survival. Unchecked, we, we might actually manage to extinguish the human race by 2050, a mere hundred years between mastery and extinction. Now, dinosaurs ruled the Earth for 175 million years. Even T-Rex managed about 10 million years with a brain the size of a pea and hands so weak, Lego would have been a challenge. <sighs> My son is a management accountant and you know, he can't do Lego for toffee. The, the night sky here is, is truly beautiful. Not least because, well, the nearest lamppost is three miles away. The local dogs have to walk cross-legged. George Formby would have gone unheard if he grew up around here. Well, pondering all this and, and seeing the magnificence of the universe beyond our, our tiny, improbable planet brought a tear to my eye. But chiefly because, in the inky darkness... I had trodden on the rake, and partly because I've given up smoking. D did, did I mention that? Hmm. Saturday the 11th of April, 1409. Uh, episode 2739, Going Stir Fry Crazy. Uh, fellow inmates, uh, since lockdown, my daily routine has been reduced to staying up till 4am watching box sets of all the television I missed in the 1980s, um, getting up at midday, uh, pretending to work in the garden or the garage for a couple of hours, or, or drinking coffee to the Radio 4 afternoon play, as I call it, opening today's bottle of wine, uh, uh, cooking the evening meal, hitting the cheese board and the late bottled vintage port, uh, whilst ranting at the TV and finally sedating the wife at about 10pm and retiring to recommence the TV box set binge. So basically, um, normal retirement minus the coffee mornings, which is saving us at least £300 per annum. Well, win-win, <laughs> I say. Highlight of the fortnight is going food shopping. But there are downsides. After 20 minutes of the two-metre funeral march to get inside, the aisles are now one way. I always shop with a menu plan, and after 50 years of looking after myself, well, uh, mother, awful cook, first wife, couldn't cook, second wife, won't cook, uh, means I, I'm handy in the kitchen with more than just a paintbrush and some door handles. <laughs> Now, improvising another dish when, when a critical ingredient is absent is mere child's play to someone trained in the laboratory investigation of type 3 familial hypercholesterolemia. Except when you realise you passed the substitute ingredients two aisles ago, uh, and now you have to go round again. Unfortunately, uh, at the far end is the queue for all the tills. Trying to walk past this is fraught with danger. Bong! Attention shoppers, please form an orderly queue for the tills in the sanitary products aisle. Thank you. Bong! Yes, sir, that means you. Please wait until Maureen from stationery indicates which till is ready. Bong! Yes, sir, you in the odd socks with your flies open. Bong! Oh, so sorry, I, I didn't mean to embarrass you. Oh, my God. 
Bong. Clean up on sanitary products aisle, please. Accordingly, this week's menu is lamb with mince sauce, apple crumble and mustard. <sighs> Monday, salt and peppermint squid. Tuesday, skate and kidney pie. Baby new wipes, tender stem ginger. Wednesday, boiled beef and parrots. Thursday, hand-raised cork pie, pickled bunions. Friday, fish and tortilla chips with mushy cheese. Saturday, mint and onions with boiled lice. Leftovers, traditional bubble and scream. The trip back to Tenbury, from Tenbury was quite sobering. All the way along the A456, entrances to farms and the grander houses are now barred against the pandemic with a variety of five-bar gates, um, agricultural or decorative. Of course, we're, we're so much laid back here at home where, where we leave the gates open because we've already figured the virus can get in over the fence. Well... <clears throat> As my father used to say on occasions like this, I think I'll have another. Good God.